In the previous section of the chapter, we learned that when two waves meet together, they add together each of the individual displacements of the waves. Then we also learned that if in a very specific condition where both of these waves are traveling in opposite directions, they add together to form something very unique called the stationary wave, which looks something like this. Okay, so that's so far what we have seen, cases of where waves add together what they form. Today though, we're going to look at what happens when two sources have overlapping waves in space. So they're not exactly two waves traveling in opposite direction. It's something like this, okay? Two speakers, two sound waves, and you see how these two waves from the sources overlap with each other. That's what we're gonna look at in this next section of the chapter called interference. So what is interference? Well, let's start with the definition. Still waves overlapping, right? So when two waves superpose or overlap, but in this case, we're not gonna just say that, we're gonna add this word in when two coherent waves superpose overlap. Later we'll come to a little bit what that word means, okay? But first, uh, overlap also means meet. The resultant displacement is the sum of individual displacement of both waves. That's the same as what we have been looking at so far. Okay, but instead of forming what we call previously antinodes and nodes, we are in this two-dimensional, see the word 2D here, in this two-dimensional space, we will use these terms more called alternating maxima and minima. Okay, what's that? So you see these points where the waves uh, travel? Okay, where's our sources? One source is somewhere here. Let's call another source on this side, on the other side of the circle. Say so both waves will spread out in space and they will travel and meet at point Q. So wave number one, pew, 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 meets here. Wave number two, pew, 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 will travel here. And depending on whether they are a crest or trough at the point Q, they will either add together, like what we saw previously, crest plus crest. Uh, then you get double the height, right? Resultant wave. Woo, to the, double the amplitude. That could be possible. Or maybe at point Q, Maybe it's a crest from one wave, but a trough from another wave. Then they might cancel out in that case. Flat. Zero amplitude. Okay, so that's sometimes what we call maxima and minima. Maxima, minima. We'll learn more about that in a little bit. But first, we're going to go back to the very important word here. Coherent. What is coherence? Mm. So when we come to the word coherent, what we really mean is you're talking about two different waves with a constant phase difference. What does a constant phase difference mean? Okay, throw back a little bit. Remember what phase difference is? Phase difference is kind of like one wave is lagging behind the other wave. So if wave number one is moving like this, wave number two is lagging just a bit behind. So you see these two waves that I just draw? There's a small tiny little lag up there. This is the lag, aka the phase difference. Okay, so back to this coherence idea. Look at this wave source. How did they start off their journey? They started off out of phase. One wave is at the highest point while the other wave is at the lowest point. Wait, let's not call this up and down. Let's call this high and low. Out of phase. So I'm going to write here, in this beginning here, it is 180 degrees out of phase. Many, 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 many cycles later, let's look. What is the phase difference now? At the end, it is still out of phase. One wave is going down and the other wave is up. Still 180 out of phase. Okay, so we still say it is still 180 out of phase phase. So that's what we mean by a constant phase difference. It's still 180 out of phase. So what would a non-coherent or incoherent wave set look like? That would be an example down here. So if you look at this, uh -huh, you see a different, you see something sus here of these ones here. So they start off in phase. Let's look at the beginning. Both are starting in the middle and moving up. Start in the middle, moving up. Together, they move up. Okay, that's in phase. In phase.
face. But as you see, as they go along, there's some weird stuff going here, some abrupt face change here, some abrupt face change here, and what happened at the end? Let's look. At the end, they are kind of in face, but not quite. At some point, I don't even know what happened. For example, uh, let's say this point in the middle, right here. They are not in phase. One is going, one is downwards, one is at the highest point. So, oh, this is not in phase. And then here, they are kind of in phase, question mark. So there's a lot of weird stuff going on here. The phase difference between them is not fixed. It keeps changing. So this is what we call an incoherent, see the word here, incoherent light source. Whereas previously, they have a coherent, two coherent wave source, they have a constant phase difference. So back to the beginning, uh, what was it again? Ah yes, maxima minima. So what's up with the maxima minima? Waves adding and waves cancelling each other out. Well, you can kind of summarize it in this diagram. Okay. So remember the wave spreading out that we saw earlier? At some point, throw back a little bit. Say in this case, if you have a crest, meeting a crest with some amplitude, then it's two times higher. Woo, double. This is uh, previously in stationary wave, we call those points antinodes. Okay, look at down here. Antinode is this point where a crest meets a crest. So this, this is the case. So I'm right here, this is a N T node. Here we will also start to call it points where you have what we call maxima. This is where a maxima occurs. Another point possible uh, is on this dotted line here as well. Okay, you notice these blue lines, right? These blue lines that we draw are often the wave fronts. Basically, usually we call it the crest, la, the crest. So where two blue lines intersect, where I highlighted here, that's where you have antinode meeting antinode. But you can also have a, a, a antinode where it's negative amplitude, say negative A meeting a negative A, and they add up together to become negative 2A. This one, we also call it an antinode, the largest amplitude, remember? Uh, also considered a maxima. And look where it is. Here, it's not where line meets line though. Here is where cra uh, the, the, the space meets the empty space. Okay, empty space. Huh? So that's exactly where a, a trough could be at. So this is in the case of, let's label it, a trough meeting a trough. Trough, trough. <laughs> the previous one was a crest meeting a crest. Even bigger crest. The other one, a trough, we think a trough, even deeper valley. That's still adding. So, how about when they cancel out? Ah, see the word down here? We called it a node previously in stationary waves. You can still call them nodes as well. So, node. Here, we also call it points of minima. This is when an amplitude meets a negative Am uh, not amplitude, sorry, positive displacement meets a negative displacement and they can probably cancel out to have a zero amplitude at the end. In this case, usually you will need one crest and one trough. So in the diagram, based on this crest and trough, you will need to look for a line, a space where a line meets an empty space. Okay, so for example, this node will be this point here. Yeah, can you see the line? Let's draw the line. The line is like that. The space comes from the other, other wave. Like that. Okay, I'm going to highlight the whole thing. This is from the other wave. Space. The line comes from the first source. Line. Okay, can you see the point right here? So this point is where a line crosses a space. Crest meets truck. Okay, so remember these key terms. So why are we studying this? Uh? Ah, so this idea of waves meeting in 2D space will be applicable to a lot of things. We'll go through them in the next few chapters. But one that we can see in your bathroom or in any swimming pool is the interference of water waves. 
So we use this as an intro today. So this is what we call the ripple tank experiment. There is a tank of water, as you can see. Do you need to know this setup? Yes, you kind of need to know this setup. Okay, the tank of water is right here. And uh, there is a motor with two dippers right here in the highlighted region. Now, what's up with that motor? Well, there is a motor connected to two dippers where they dip into the water like this, dip, 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 dip. The purpose of the dipper is to create waves in this case. And as a side note, uh, it's important that these two dippers are connected to the same motor so that they are coherent. Remember the keyword from, from earlier? Coherent, um, both uh, dippers connected to the same motor by the wooden bar. Because if they didn't connect to the same motor, maybe they may become out of phase and then together and then something lag a bit. You never know. Okay, so we want to make sure we have that to form a nice actual pattern. So what will happen is, you get these nice patterns on the water. The light will shine so you can see a little bit clearer. And then you get to see your picture down there below, the shadow. Now sometimes people may add a stroboscope, a strobe light. And that's so you can freeze the pattern so you don't see it moving so much. So, for example, here's a simulation because we can't really go to a pool at this moment. Um, yeah, so here's a pool of uh, water. Let's add a dripper here. It's going to represent my dipper. So you see this woo, nice shadow from one wave, just one wave causing waves uh, in here. So if we look at the graph, a side view of this water level, you notice the water level is going up and down right at this spot here. That's because of the dripping or dipper, pushing the water down and up. Now let us add another dipper right here. So now you have two and you notice how the pattern starts to mix together and form some weird pattern. Okay, so this is what you would see for a ripple tank. And uh, if you want to measure the graph, you see, oh, it looks the same, mommy. Nothing too different. Okay, okay. But what about we do this? Ooh, we can compare. Okay, let's compare and check. Are these two in phase or not? Let's check the water level at the top point and the water level at the bottom point. I think they are moving together, up and down together. Okay, no problem. Um, What else can we see? Hmm, cannot see much. Oh. So water waves, you can't really see things other than just the pattern. But when we go to things like light, Ooh, let's try light. Light, you have one light source and a second light source. And oh, this pattern is beautiful. Now for light, you can shine it on a screen. Like that. Example, you put a screen at the end and you shine two lights at it. You will notice this bright and dark, bright and dark spots. We can't see that with water waves, but we can see that with light. And if you want to plot an intensity to represent how bright a position is, Notice how this middle part is super bright. So the graph, let's pause this thing, it's making me a bit, <laughs> a bit dizzy. This bright spot, the intensity is super high. This is what we call a maxima, where the waves always add up. This spot is super dark. This is what we call the minima we mentioned just now. And look at the intensity, it's zero. All the waves always cancel out at this spot. All right. And might as well see what is this graph look like. Ah, so if we look at the graph from where the source goes until the screen, you can see, oh, the wave amplitude slowly becomes smaller and smaller a little bit. So this is the pattern that we're going to be looking at. Uh, just curious, sound wave. Can we see sound wave? Ah? Uh, no, we cannot. So throw back to sound wave. You will see particles in air, jiggling in air. Look at them doing their little jiggle. But when you send a wave through one speaker, then you send a wave through another speaker. Now it's really, really hard to see the pattern here because the particles are jiggling everywhere. But in real life, you can hear the difference. If you go to a concert hall, uh, some spots are very loud. Some spots are very soft, depending on where you sit in a cinema or concert hall. Cinema is a bit complicated. But similar concept, both waves will add together. 
But back to our water waves. The question is, how do you know, let's pause this, how do you know at which spot the waves were at? How do you know which spot the waves will cancel out? We can't always look at the diagram like this if we are doing exams or doing some calculations. And that's what we're going to look at in the next video. How do you know when a point will be adding up to be a maxima or cancelling each other out to be a minima? I'll see you in the next video.